So I welcome you all to the new session of Fourier Integral Transforms, where we shall be discussing today the some of the numericals of Fourier Integral Theorem or the Fourier Cosine and Sine Integral Theorems. So let us take a problem. So we have to solve using the Fourier Integral Theorem that the function is given by this equation that the function value is zero when x is less than zero, its value is x when x is less lying between zero to pi and the value is zero when x is greater than pi. So we have to prove that according to the Fourier integral theorem, the fx can be expanded according to this term where fx will be one by pi lambda square integral zero to infinity lambda pi sine lambda of pi minus x plus cos lambda times pi minus x minus cos lambda x into d lambda. So, first of all, for solving this equation, let us consider some of the points. So, we have this Fourier integral theorem. So, the Fourier integral theorem statement states that the fx can be written as 1 by pi integral 0 to infinity integral minus infinity to infinity, the function itself f of t into cos of u t minus x into dt into du. So since we have to use this Fourier integral theorem for our expansion and to prove the result, so we have this formula. So when we consider this formula, what we find that here is a term of cos of u t minus x. You can see this term cos of u t minus x. And here also we are having some terms of cos and sine type t minus x or something like that factor. So what we can relate that our u is our lambda here. So first substitution that we have to make is that we will first substitute the value of u to be equal to lambda in the Fourier integral theorem. So this was the Fourier integral theorem. So we will substitute the value of u to be lambda such that the f of x will be written as 1 by pi integral 0 to infinity integral minus infinity to infinity ft cos of lambda t minus x into dt and here it was du so for du we have written d lambda because when u is equal to lambda then du is also equal to d lambda now we substitute the value of f of t now looking at the function f of x this is the function f of x which is given so when we look at the value of the function what we find that the function f of x is taking the value for x less than 0 means the values from minus infinity to 0, the function is having a value of 0. But for the value of 0 to pi, it is having the value of x since we are now substituting for f of t. So we will write t instead of x. And for all the values greater than pi means from pi to infinity, the value is again 0. So we can see here for the limits minus infinity to infinity, what we shall put, we shall substitute the value of the limits of the integral as 0 to pi. So the limits would be changed now from 0 to pi and the value of the function will be substituted to be equal to t. So we have our f of x is 1 by pi times 0 to infinity integral 0 to pi t times cos lambda t minus x dt into d lambda. Now we have the term of cos of lambda t minus of x which can be expanded as using the relation of trigonometry result which is cos of a minus of b. And we know that the result of cos a minus b or the expansion of cos a minus b is cos a cos b plus sin a sin b. So we expand our cos of lambda t minus x as cos lambda t cos lambda x plus sin lambda t sin lambda x. Since we have expanded the cos lambda t minus x using this result and we now break our in integral into two parts. So we are splitting the integral into two parts. So we get 1 by pi times integral 0 to infinity. Another integral is now from 0 to pi t cos lambda t cos lambda x dt plus again integral 0 to pi t sin lambda t sin lambda x dt into d lambda. 
so we have the equation that it is 1 by pi cos lambda x now we are integrating the equation that is by considering by u into v formula integration by parts and we know that the integration is over now our dt so we have a term of cos of lambda x here and we have a term of sin of lambda x in our two integrals which can be taken out of the integration and we can apply the integration by parts by parts formula is integration by parts formula is integral uv is equal to u into first integral of v minus first derivative of u into double integration of v plus double differentiation of u into triple integration of v and so on so using this formula of integration by parts and taking out cos lambda x and sin lambda x from the respective integrals outside and treating them as constants we can expand our integrals as t into minus sin lambda t by lambda minus 1 because differentiation of t is 1 and double integral of cos lambda t will be minus cos lambda t by lambda square and further we get that the differentiation of t is 0 so we have these two terms and now we shall substitute the limits of 0 to pi similarly for the second integral we have sin lambda x times t cos lambda t by lambda minus of minus sin lambda t by lambda square and we have to substitute the limits for 0 to pi into d lambda so on substituting the limits that is for upper limit minus lower limit what we get we get as cos lambda x minus pi sin lambda pi by lambda plus cos lambda pi by lambda square minus 0 minus 1 by lambda square similarly for the second integral we have sin lambda x pi cos of lambda pi by lambda plus sin of lambda pi by lambda square minus 0 minus 0 into d lambda so collecting the terms of pi lambda from all the terms we get pi lambda coefficients are minus sin lambda pi cos lambda x plus sin lambda x cos lambda pi and we have cos lambda x cos lambda pi plus sin lambda x sin lambda pi minus of cos lambda x now again using the result of sin of a minus b and cos of a minus b we have sin a minus b is sin a cos b minus sin b cos a and cos of a minus b is cos a cos b plus sin a sin b so we can apply on the first bracket term the formula of sin a minus b and on the second bracket term we can apply the formula of cos of a minus b so we get the result that our function f of x is 1 by pi lambda square integral 0 to infinity pi lambda sin of lambda pi minus x plus cos lambda pi minus x minus of cos lambda x into dx so in this way we have we are able to solve our numerical and we are able to prove the result that we have expanded our function using the fourier integral theorem in the desired equation we were supposed to prove so let's see the next numerical and again using the fourier integral formula we have to prove that the integral 0 to infinity lambda square plus 2 upon lambda square plus 4 cos lambda x d lambda is pi by 2 e to the power minus x cos x if the x value is greater than 0 so since we have to apply the fourier integral formula and we have to prove the statement first of all what we have to see we have to recognize our function itself because we are not given our function so in the question itself from the question itself we have to recognize the formula so now if we see this first of all we see that our use in the fourier integral theorem is replaced by lambda so, so first of all we shall substitute our u to be equal to lambda in the fourier integral theorem and secondly what we find here we find here the terms of cos we have a trigonometric cos term in the equation so instead of using the fourier integral formula we shall be using the fourier cosine integral formula since the equations are involving the cos terms and what we see we have the fourier cosine integral as 0 2 pi 2 by pi integral 0 to infinity cos lambda x t lambda into 0 to infinity integral f t cos lambda t dt so this is our fourier cosine integral formula and what we find here that if we take this 2 by pi to the left hand side so pi by 2 will be multiplied with pi by x 
So since pi by 2 will be multiplied with pi by x and what we see in this equation of the question that pi by 2 is multiplied with some factor. So the factor is this e pi e to the power minus x cos x. So whatever factor is multiplied with pi by 2, we take that as our function. So we choose our e to the power minus x cos x to be our function and we expand according to it. So we choose that our function is e to the power minus x cos x and we substitute that our u is equal to lambda because in our question, our u's are replaced with lambdas. So we now solve it. So our function is this f of x is 2 by pi integral 0 to infinity cos lambda x t lambda f t cos lambda t dt. So now we shall be substituting the value of f of t. So f of t will be now e to power of minus t cos t because our function was f of x cos x. So we get that e to power minus x cos x is 1 by pi integral 0 to infinity cos lambda x dx. And now we can use the value of 2 cos a cos b is equal to cos of a plus b plus cos a minus b. So we can apply this formula to the second integral. So what we get, we get the result that it is 0 to infinity e power minus t cos lambda plus 1t in plus cos of lambda minus 1t into dt. So we have applied the formula of 2 cos a cos b. So the, this 2 by pi, this 2 is taken with this integral and the equation has been solved. So now we split our integral into two parts. So we have here the integral 0 to infinity e to the power minus t cos lambda plus 1t dt lambda plus integral 0 to infinity e to the power minus t cos of lambda minus 1t dt. Now since the integrals have to take the form of e to the power ax cos of bx dx, which can be expanded as e to the power ax upon a square plus b square integral a cos bx plus b sine of bx. So we apply this formula for solving our integrals. So what we get, we get our result as e to the power minus t upon 1 plus lambda plus 1 ka whole square because our a is minus 1 and for the first integral our b is lambda plus 1 and for the second integral our b value is having a value of lambda minus 1. So substituting the values of a and b according to this equation we get the result as minus 1 cos lambda plus 1t plus lambda plus 1 times sine of lambda plus 1t and now we have to substitute the limits of t from 0 to infinity. For the second integral when we apply the integral we get the result that is e to the power minus t upon 1 plus lambda minus 1 ka whole square into minus 1 cos lambda minus 1 t plus lambda minus 1 sine of lambda minus 1 t. Now applying the limits to both the integrals, we get that it is equal to 0 because e to the power minus infinity is 0 minus e to the power minus 0 upon 1 plus lambda plus 1 ka whole square into minus 1 cos 0 plus lambda plus 1 sine 0. And for the second integral, we get the result as 0 minus e to the power minus 0 upon 1 plus lambda minus 1 ka whole square minus cos 0 plus lambda minus 1 sine 0. Anything raised to power 0 is 1. So we expand our integral as minus 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 gets plus. So it's plus 1 upon 1 plus lambda plus 1 ka whole square into plus minus 1 upon 1 plus lambda minus 1 ka whole square into minus 1. So we have this result now. We solve the equation to get the value of 1 by pi integral 0 to infinity cos lambda x into 2 times of lambda square plus 2 upon lambda square plus 2 ka whole square minus of 2 lambda ka whole square because in the denominator we can see here that we have applied the formula of a plus b into a minus b. So upon solving the result of our minus x cos x is 2 by pi integral 0 to infinity lambda square plus 2 upon lambda square plus 4 cos lambda x dx. So according to the question what we had to prove it, we take this 2 by pi to the left hand side and we get it the equation as integral 0 to infinity lambda square plus 2 upon lambda square plus 4 cos lambda x is pi by 2 times e to the power minus x cos x.
So, according to the question, please recognize which type of Fourier integral theorem you want to apply. If there is a cos term, apply the Fourier integral cosine theorem. Or if it is having a sine term, apply the Fourier sine integral theorem. And whatever factor is multiplied by pi by 2, consider that part as your the function that is f of x. So, by choosing and remembering these factors or these points, we are able to solve our problems related to the Fourier integral formula. So let's solve the next question. So here we have to solve the integral equation and we are given that the integral 0 to infinity fx cos lambda x dx is equal to e to power minus lambda. So we have to solve the equation. We have to find the value of f of x. So now since we have to solve the integral equation and we see that here we have the term of cos of lambda x. Since we are having a term of cos of lambda x, so we will now be substituting the value equation of Fourier cosine integral theorem. So we shall use this equation to solve the result. And since it is having a lambda term, so we shall substitute the value of u equal to lambda in the Fourier cosine integral formula. So the Fourier cosine integral formula now has the term of f of x is 2 by pi 0 to infinity cos lambda x t lambda times integral 0 to infinity cos lambda t dt. Now if we see this term, see the equation, the second integral 0 to infinity f t cos lambda t dt. So we have this equation and this equation value is given that we have 0 to infinity fx cos lambda x dx is equal to e to power minus lambda. So for the second integral, we directly substitute the value which is equal to e to power minus lambda. So we get the value of fx to be equal to 2 by pi 0 to infinity cos of lambda x d lambda into e to power minus lambda. So what we see, our integral is now of the type of e to power ax cos px dx, which can be written as e to power ax upon a square plus b square a cos bx plus b sine of bx. So we can see here that our a is minus 1 and our b is x because we have to integrate with respect to lambda variable. So what we get, we get our function f of x is 2 by pi So the function f of x is 2 by pi e, e to power minus lambda upon 1 plus x square into minus 1 cos lambda x plus lambda sine of lambda x and the limits are from 0 to infinity. So when we substitute the limits, higher li upper limit and lower limit, so we get that it is e to power minus infinity minus e to power minus 0 upon 1 plus x square into minus 1 cos 0 plus lambda sine 0. And sine 0 is 0 and cos 0 is 1 and anything raised to power 0 is 1. So substituting all these substitutions, we get the result that our f of x is 2 by pi upon 1 plus x square and this is the desired result and this is the solution of the integral equation where we had to calculate the value of f of x. So in this way we are able to solve the integral equation. So just judge which integral theorem you have to apply. It is involving a term of cos of lambda x. Since it is involving a term of cos term, so apply the Fourier cosine integral theorem. So in this way we are able to solve this equation also. So the next question is that we have to solve using the Fourier integral representation and we have to prove that our integral 0 to infin infinity lambda sine lambda x upon lambda square plus alpha square into lambda square plus beta square times d lambda is equal to pi by 2 times e to power minus alpha x minus e to power minus beta x upon beta square minus alpha square. So we have to prove this result. So now... First of all, we have to judge which type of integral representation we have to choose. So we can see here that there is the term of sine of lambda x. Since there is a term of sine term, so we shall be considering the Fourier sine integral representation. This is the first step how to judge it. If it is involving a cos term, uh, consider the Fourier cosine integral representation. Now it is having a term of sine lambda x, so we shall be choosing the Fourier sine integral representation. And secondly, in the Fourier sine integral representation, we have replaced our u by lambda, so we shall substitute that u is equal to lambda. 
and now we have to again judge what is our function so we can see here that our function that is pi by 2 is multiplied with the factor of x variable as e to power minus alpha x minus e to power minus beta x so whatever term is multiplied whatever function is multiplied with your pi by 2 times so we shall take that value and here is a term of also beta square minus alpha square. So since this is a constant term, so it is your wish whether you want to consider it or you don't want to consider it. So accordingly, you can choose the value of f of x. So we choose the value of f of x to be the numerator that is e to power minus alpha x minus e to power minus beta x. So this is our function. Now we shall expand and use our function for the expansion of the Fourier sine integral. So we have the function as f of x is 2 by pi integral 0 to infinity sine lambda x t lambda integral 0 to infinity sine lambda t f t dt. So now we shall substitute the value of f of t in this equation. So what we get here, we get that our integral is now e to power minus alpha t minus e to power minus beta t sine lambda t into dt. So now we can split our integral into two parts. So we have integral 0 to infinity e to power minus lambda alpha t sine lambda t dt minus integral 0 to infinity e to power minus beta t sine lambda t into dt. Now we shall use the integral result of expansion of integration of e to power ax sine bx dx which is equal to e to power ax upon a square plus b square a sine bx minus of b cos bx. We can use this reference formula for solving our equation. And in this term, we can see here that for the fact our a value is alpha and the b value is lambda. And in the second integral, our a value is minus beta and our b value is lambda. So we substitute the values. So we can see here we have expanded and we can have the result as 2 by pi integral 0 to infinity sine lambda x t lambda x into e to power minus alpha t upon minus alpha co whole square because a is minus alpha so it is alpha square plus lambda square minus of alpha sine lambda t minus of lambda cos lambda t because a is minus alpha and b is lambda. Similarly, for the second integral, we have e to power minus beta t upon beta square plus lambda square and a is here minus of beta and b is lambda. So, it is minus beta times sine lambda t minus lambda cos of lambda t. So, now substituting the limits, so we get sine lambda x t lambda is integral in the bracketed term, we have e to power minus infinity minus e to power 0 upon alpha square plus lambda square minus alpha sine 0 minus lambda cos 0. <coughs> minus of e to power minus infinity minus e to power 0 upon beta square plus lambda square minus beta sine 0 minus lambda cos 0. Here we have applied the limits. So now collecting the terms, we get this as lambda upon alpha square plus lambda square minus lambda upon beta square plus lambda square. So we get the result as 2 by pi 0 to infinity sine lambda x d lambda x into lambda into beta square plus lambda square minus alpha square minus lambda square upon alpha square plus lambda square into beta square plus lambda. So this is simple LCM that we have solved it. We have taken the LCM and solved the equation. So what we get, we get here as 2 by pi beta square minus alpha square 0 to infinity lambda sine lambda x d lambda upon alpha square plus lambda square into beta square plus lambda square. And since we have to prove this equation, so what we have to prove, we have just uh, doing the rearrangement of the terms and we get the desired result that is, it is equal to integral 0 to infinity lambda sine lambda x g lambda upon alpha square plus lambda square into beta square plus lambda square. We have taken this constant term to the left hand side. So we get this result as pi by 2 times e to power minus alpha x minus e to power minus beta x upon beta square minus alpha square. So this is our result. We have proved the equation. So the next problem is that we have to find the complex form of the Fourier integral representation. Our function is given by e to power minus kx, which is having the value when x is greater than 0. And also the k term involved here is a positive term. That is, it is greater than 0. And elsewhere, it is 0. 
So we have this function f of x. We have to use the complex form of the integral representation. So we know that the complex form of the integral representation of f of x is given by 1 by 2 pi integral minus infinity to infinity e power minus iota ux du into integral minus infinity to infinity ft times e to power iota ut into dt. So again, what we find here that we shall substitute the u value by lambda. So it is upon your wish whether you want to substitute or not. So we replace the u by lambda. So we get our f of x is 1 upon 2 pi integral minus infinity to infinity e power minus iota lambda x t lambda integral minus infinity to infinity f t e power iota lambda t dt. Now we have given this value of function. So we substitute the value of function in our result. So and it, it is given that it is taking the value when x is greater than 0 and elsewhere it is 0. So the limits of minus infinity to infinity gets changed for the positive values that is for 0 to infinity. So we have our function f of x is 1 upon 2 pi integral minus infinity to infinity e power minus iota lambda x t lambda into integral 0 to infinity e power minus of kt because our function is e power minus kx and now it is in the terms of t so it can take e power minus kt e power iota lambda t into dt. So we get the result as this. So now base same powers are added to form that e to power minus of k minus iota lambda into t. Now since there was a limit of infinity, so it is always preferred to take a negative sign common because e to power minus infinity will be zero. Otherwise, our equation will be not defined. So we have this result that we apply the integration, we get e to power minus k minus iota lambda t upon minus of k minus iota lambda. The limits are from 0 to infinity. So we have applied the limits and what we get is our desired result, which is equal to f of x is 1 upon 2 pi integral minus infinity to infinity e to power minus iota lambda x t lambda upon k minus iota lambda. And this is our desired result. So I hope that you have understood all the numericals related to the Fourier integral representation and you would take these steps into consideration before solving the equations. So always remember that if there is a cost term in the equation of the uh, equation, so we apply the Fourier cosine integral. If it is sine term, we apply the Fourier sine integral. And if it is written that we have to find the complex form, we apply the Fourier complex integral representation. Otherwise, we apply the Fourier integral theorem. So thank you and meet you again in the next session. Thank you.